Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. This is the first video of a series where I'll be doing full image edits using Luminar Neo. In today's video, I'm going to be doing an edit of a landscape image that's going to be a relatively simple edit. Why? Well, you need to start somewhere, so I thought I'd start here. Hopefully, what I do in this video will give you some idea of how you could use Luminar Neo to process your images. So this is an unprocessed RAW file. You can see over here on the left-hand side, it was shot with the Nikon Z7 II. And I'm just gonna jump over to the edit panel and start editing it. I'm going to go to the develop tool first. That's where I like to start. Um, usually, I mean, if it needs to be cropped, I would crop first. If it needs to be straightened, I do that first. But in this case, I don't think I need to crop it at all. And I think it's pretty straight. So I'm gonna stay with that. I'm gonna to go to the camera profile and I'm going to try some different camera profiles. Let's try camera standard. I kind of like that better. So I'm going to go with camera standard. Then I'm going to jump down to the light section of the develop tool. And what I usually do is I'll go to the highlights and I'll pull those down a little bit. I want to try to see a little detail in those brightest areas of the highlights. And then I'll go to the shadows. And similarly, I'll move that up and really open up the shadows quite a bit. So you can see the whole image now is looking a lot better. Now I'll go to the whites slider and I want to get a white and black point. And to do that, I'm going to turn on the clipping indicators. I want you to make note of the histogram right now when I hover over it. See those two circles up there in the corners? I'll hit the J key on my keyboard and you'll see those two circles are now filled in. That means the clipping indicators are on. So if I go to whites and move this to the right, if I was to blow out the highlights, you'd start to see red overlaid on the blown out highlights. And you can see there isn't, so I'm in good shape. Similarly, I'll go to the black slider, move this to the left. And if I start to crush the blacks, you'll see blue get overlaid. And you can see there is blue starting to show up. I'll back that off. I don't mind crushing the blacks a little bit. I like having absolute black in the image, but I do not like to blow out the highlights uh, personally. So that's just the way I would do it. So I don't mind this little bit of blue showing up here. I'm going to turn those clipping indicators off by hitting the J key on my keyboard so they're now turned off. All right, so far, so good. Um, let's uh, close down light, close down blacks. Let's go to curves. And I'm going to go to the blue curve. And what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of yellow to the highlights. And you would do that by going to this blue tone curve and going to the top right-hand side of the curve. That is where the highlights reside. And if I pull this down, I'll start to introduce a little bit of yellow into those highlights. Now, see, there's before and just a little bit, just like that. That's all I want. Nothing spectacular, nothing overbearing, just a hint of warmth in those clouds up there. So that is that. Now I'll go to the color. I think the color temperatures are right. Um, I'm going to... Um, maybe add a little bit of saturation touch like that. Okay, so far so good. Uh, sharpness, um, you know what? I could add a little bit of sharpness. Nothing special there. Now it was shot at ISO 64. If I zoom in, I really don't see any noise whatsoever. So I'm not even going to go to noise reduction. Optics, I'll come in and click on auto distortion correction, auto fix chromatic aberration and auto defringe. I'll just click those three boxes. I don't need to use anything in the transform tool. Now I'm going to jump down to structure and I want to add some structure to the lighthouse, but I do not want to add the structure anywhere else. So what I'll do here is I'll first go to masking and I'm going to go to the mask AI and let it look at the scene and it's going to find the sky, find the man-made structure, find the land and it's going to find the water. And once it finds all those different elements, I'm going to say, I'm going to click on architecture. I want it to affect that. And you can see that it found the lighthouse, but it also found some of the ground around the lighthouse. I maybe don't want it to affect at all. So what I'll do is I'll go back to mask AI and I'll go to a brush and I want to erase from that area and you can see I have a brush here and once I start to click you'll see or once I click with the left mouse button you'll see the overlay comes back 
So I could remove the adjustment from everywhere except the lighthouse. Okay. Now I'll go to adjustments and I'll just like I'll turn the amount way up and you can see how it's affecting the lighthouse, right? So I'll just make it more reasonable. Like a boost, let it render. Something like that. I think that looks pretty good. So I added structure just to the lighthouse and I think that is fine. I'm going to go to color and what I'm going to do is jump down to this HSL section and I'm going to go to this drop down. I'm going to switch it to luminance. And you can see there's some yellows and greens, maybe even a little orange in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the yellows and make them brighter. So you see how that's making the yellows in here brighter. Then I'm going to go to oranges. I'll make those brighter as well. Then I'm going to go to green and make that a little darker. Just a little more tonal variance in here so it doesn't look all homogenous. So it looks a little more, you know, noteworthy for lack of a better term. I'm going to go to the blue and I'm going to make that a little darker. So that's going to make the blue sky, blue parts of the sky a little darker. And that's that. All right, let's see where, where we stand. I'm going to do a before after. I'm going to hit hold in the backslash key on my keyboard. There's before. So that's an unprocessed raw file. And there's after. Looks pretty good, I think. Um, you may look at it here and like my first glance, it looks like I'm haloing around here. But if you do the before and look at it, you could see it was bright right behind the lighthouse. So that area is normal. That's the way it looked. It's not haloing actually. And I think I'm done. So I'm going to go to the vignette. I mentioned this would be a simple um, edit in Luminar Neo. And I'm going to give it a darker vignette. A darker vignette helps push everyone's attention more towards the middle. So I'll just kind of do that. Here's a, like an extreme, but I'll just back it off. I just want it to be slight. So it's not very noticeable. It just helps people push everyone more towards the middle of the image. And I'm done. There is before. Oops, there's before, and there is after. Before, after. So that is a relatively simple edit. I only used a couple of the tools. I didn't do any cropping. I didn't do, you know, really anything except process the image. And it was, you know, I had a spectacular sky that morning I was here. So I really didn't have to do a lot here to uh, process this image. Now, in future videos, I'll do some images that require some more advanced techniques. So you'll see more. I'll also do images like I'll do portraits and things like that. Some different types of images, not just landscape images. But this is the first one. It's a simple landscape. Uh, down the road, I will do a more involved landscape. Maybe something where I'll be replacing a sky and so on. So... That's it. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.